Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video, which is all about the documentaries, podcasts, YouTube channels where you can get your nonfiction history fix should you need it. And I figured this was a perfect time to do this video because there are a number of us that are well into the history challenge at this point. And the purpose of that is to encourage you to read at least one nonfiction history book during the last two weeks of August. And I live and breathe history. It is my love. I read nonfiction history. That's my preference um, in nonfiction. I read a lot of historical fiction. I am a history documentary junkie. I'm always looking for ways to absorb more history from the comfort of my home when like a museum or something is not available to me. So I figured I'd share some of my favorites with you as well. So why don't we dive right in. So we're going to start off with the documentaries and full disclosure here, a number of them are on World War II because that just happens to be a particular time period that I am very interested in, both in the books I read, the documentaries I watch, etc. And the first one I want to talk about is The Rape of Europa, which is named after the Titian painting, and aptly so. This is a documentary that is all about the way that the Nazis during World War II were plundering all of these pieces of art from all over Europe with the intention of putting it in this museum that Hitler envisioned for the Third Reich. And we know that he thought himself a painter, didn't get accepted into the art school that he applied to, that whole thing. But this is all about the way that the Nazis kind of systematically went throughout Europe trying to steal this art. And it's also about the ways that the Allied forces tried to minimize the impact of this. In some cases, hiding art. In other cases, just trying to preserve it from bombings, all that sort of thing. And this is a documentary that a few years ago was on Netflix. I don't think it is anymore, but I had seen it so many times and enjoyed it so much that I actually bought the DVD. I love art and museums and so this was the perfect marriage of looking at World War II and art history and yeah I just really really enjoyed it. There are a couple books on similar things. The Monuments Men, which is nonfiction, um, is about a similar sort of circumstance um, with these individuals who were actually sent in Europe to protect and save a lot of this art and in some cases recover it. And so that's a book that is similar to this. Um, but it, it was great. I highly, highly recommend it for anyone who's interested in art history or World War II. The next documentary is one that if you leave this video, this is the one I would encourage you all to watch. And this is 13th, which is on Netflix, and it is directed by Ava Durbinet. And this is a documentary that is so, so powerful in looking at the systemic racism against Black Americans throughout history. And it's named after the 13th Amendment, where slavery was abolished. But this looks at the ways in which the continued disenfranchisement of Black Americans was perpetuated even after the Civil War and this 13th Amendment was passed. It looks at things like convict, convict leasing and the ways that Black citizens were disenfranchised, lynchings, the Jim Crow laws in the South, the way that the war on drugs was weaponized against Black Americans. And also it looks at the prison system and that complex and how corporations and money and everything have basically been designed now to keep so many people of color in the prison system 
And so it's this really, really powerful documentary that I know with everything that happened last summer with George Floyd and Black Lives Matter and the protests, everyone was talking about this documentary. And if you haven't watched it yet, I would strongly, strongly encourage you to do so because it really was eye-opening to a lot of things. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful documentary as well. Like really well filmed, the narrative was really strong, all of that. So if there's one documentary that you watch from this video, make it that one. The next documentary is also a Netflix one and it is The Lost Pirate Kingdom. Now this is more like a docu-series, I would say. It is several episodes and there is like some dramatic acting sequences throughout to help tell the story. But if you're anyone who grew up in the era of Pirates of the Caribbean, the movies, or just really enjoy <laughs> pirates, like my mom and I binge watched the entire docu-series in an evening. It was just so interesting and fun. And the documentary is all about the rise of like the Pirate Republic in the 18th century in the Caribbean. And I just had so much fun with it because some of it I had heard of because my family is from the West Indies and Port Royal in Jamaica was like a, a safe haven or a paradise for pirates. So I grew up hearing about that sort of thing. But I never really knew that there was a pirate republic in that it was actually pretty egalitarian in the way that they kind of ran things. And yes, there were some really questionable characters, not even gray, like they were downright villains, but some of what they stood for was really interesting. And also, it was really fun learning that the English basically gave privateers these pirating licenses in order for them to loot Spanish ships during the War of Spanish Succession, I think it was, basically to take on these Spanish ships so that the British Navy didn't have to do it themselves. So there was some really interesting information there, and it was just a lot of fun and very different. It kind of set me down like a pirate path. And if anyone has any books or whether they are fiction or nonfiction recommendations that might help me here, let me know because I'm definitely like feeling a little swashbuckly lately. The next documentary is Pride, which I believe is an FX documentary, um, but you can find it on Hulu, which is how I watched it. And it was actually part of my works like Pride Month initiatives. We watched the six episodes of this docu-series together. And this is a documentary that is all about the LGBTQ plus movement over the course of six decades, starting in the 1950s. And each episode really hones in on a particular decade and the LGBTQ culture and the reception that it received by society, but also looking at the LGBTQ like movement itself. And it was really, really eye-opening, very much like sick, very much like 13th, but for the LGBTQ plus community. And I think one of the most powerful things about it were these interviews and these moments where they had people speaking about their experiences in this documentary. And it was just so, so moving. And I learned so much that I hadn't known previously. I would say that it is not the most suitable for work documentary in some cases. Like it is in some cases talking about sex. Um, so which one would expect, but I don't know that my work office expected that as much, but it is really, really interesting. And again, if you're someone who is looking to understand more of the history of the LGBTQ plus movement, I would recommend it. Um, it is 
as I said, six episodes. I think each episode is around 40 to 50 minutes long, if I remember rightly, but highly, highly, highly recommend this one as well. The next documentary is another one on World War II, and it is called The World Wars, and it's by the History Channel, I want to say, and is at this point a few years old, but this is a documentary that anytime it's on the History Channel, I watch it. And it's not a short documentary. It is, I want to say, three episodes for a total of six hours. And what makes it really interesting is the lens through which this documentary looks at these events. So it's looking at it through the eyes of the world leaders who were making the decisions during World War II. So Hitler, Roosevelt, Winston Churchill, Stalin, etc, etc, etc. And it's looking at them from 1914 through to 1945. And in 1914, it's more of a coming of age story and how these events from World War I and the interwar years actually help shape the decisions that they make in 1945. It was just really, really interesting looking at that way as, as 1914 and World War I being this coming of age, which it truly was for some of these men, and how that all comes to like a head with World War II, but they also had some really great experts speaking, not just historians and authors, but quite a few politicians and military leaders today. So that was also one that I really enjoyed um, just because of the breadth in which it looks at history during the first half of the 20th century. Next up, I want to talk about a history YouTube series and that is Puppet History, brought to you by We Are Watchers. Now, this is probably going to be the most humorous and lighthearted of the resources that I'm talking about. If you're someone who watched the BuzzFeed YouTube channel and its series, this is brought to you by Ryan and by Shane, who did BuzzFeed Unsolved. They've since moved on to create their own media company, and this is one of their TV shows or YouTube channel shows or whatever you want to call it. But it is essentially this like Jim Henson's Muppet-like character, the professor, providing a history lesson under the guise of like a TV like quiz show type thing. And the puppet professor likes to talk about these moments in history, these happenings that are lesser known, and really put like a comedic spin on it with skits and all of that. And you do and you do have this quiz show element where the professor asks Ryan, who is always a guest and also like a special guest star, these questions and they can earn jelly beans and whoever gets the most jelly beans wins this little like trophy thing and it's just absolutely ridiculous and also really really informational surprisingly i mean it's all done with like a comedic spin and it's just fabulous if you're not someone who loves history which i'm assuming most of you who are watching this video do love history it's probably your entryway your gateway drug because it is just so accessible to everyone and there's also always this like little musical number at the end which is just like a masterpiece it's it's a fun time not gonna lie um so they normally do like a season and then they take a little break and then come back and it's just a riot so definitely recommend that and lastly, we're going to talk podcasts. I'm a huge podcast listener, and I know that my preferences are political, um, history, and also sometimes a little spooky. But today we're going to talk about those history podcasts that I love. So the first one is Dan Snow's History Hits, but this podcast by him kind of covers all history and just has these really interesting sort of historical moments and 
events that he describes and he is just a really great podcaster i love his voice i also love the fact that he is a historian who seems to be extraordinarily passionate about the past which i think for any sort of history podcast you kind of need that because otherwise it might feel more like a history lesson that you're sitting through in high school. But yeah, I do really enjoy his podcast. Next, we have Noble Blood. And this is a history podcast that is a bit different from Dan Snow's. Um, I would say that this is going to be for people who kind of love the more bloody or grisly bits of history and who are really into nobility and royalty and that sort of thing because this is looking at exactly that. It is looking at nobility and royalty throughout history and the murders, the plots, the intrigues, that sort of thing that really interests people for like historical fiction and for movies and TV shows and that sort of thing. And so it's, as I said, again, more for those people who are okay with a little bit of the macabre but it is just really really interesting so i highly recommend it for that as well and then lastly the history chicks now this is probably one of the first history podcasts that i stumbled upon when i went down that rabbit hole but it is these two women hosting this history podcast focusing on women throughout history like you know, if you're a subscriber, that is my bag. I'm always looking for these women in history that I might not know about, who aren't as widely discussed or even widely known at this point. And this is an entire podcast that does just that. And so it is really right up my alley with that sort of thing. And is also just really interesting. I've learned a lot about figures that I knew about already but it is also shared some really interesting information on people who i have not heard of at all so again it it is my cup of tea it is basically a podcast that it was designed for me but yeah i would highly recommend that one as well so i think that's it i have no idea how many things i just talked about nine ten one of them it's probably gonna be nine because with my luck i didn't think of ten which would be a nice round number but i do hope that you enjoyed this video that you found some documentaries a new youtube channel or even a couple podcasts to listen to in the future and thank you so much for watching i hope you're enjoying the history challenge this time around and if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up comment and subscribe and i will see you next time